Hello and welcome to Cutterk Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV and today we are, uh, well, we're still working on silage, I know. It's been like four episodes of working on silage, but we're getting close. I have been uh, getting more familiar with auto drive here and I have to say I like it a lot. So much so, I think we're getting pretty close to uh, being able to just set the worker off on the larger part of the field over here to uh, tackle things for us. It seems to be handling things quite well. I've done a little bit of testing with the worker. I've done a lot of uh, manual driving here. We're doing the short rows, the kind of weird rows around the creek here uh, manually. As you can see, we've been able to even jump in cab and tackle some things, which has been very fun. And we've just got this little section left up here that I want to knock out, and at which point we are going to be turning things over to the automation to see if uh, the helpers in AutoDrive can manage to do the larger portion of the field over there. But uh, while we get going on that, let's uh, see if I can find a nice straight row here to get us started off. There's a few stragglers here, so we're going to just find a nice position here. And hopefully we'll be able to knock this little bit out. In fact, this little bit is fairly straightforward. If it wasn't for the curved parts uh, down there, I'd probably be just letting the worker tackle this as well. But I find the workers don't tend to appreciate the curved rows so much. And I think what we're going to do is, because it is all curvy down here, just to give the uh, auto drive worker a break, we're going to follow the curved rows around. Uh, he does a lot better if we just kind of keep moving consistently as opposed to doing a lot of turning around on the end rows. Sometimes they still get a little bit confused, take a trip off into the creek. I haven't had to manually get anybody unstuck yet. Um, they've done a great job of figuring it out on their own, as uh, ridiculous as it looks sometimes when they go flying off of the field going who knows where. But it looks like this guy is actually full now and going to be heading back up. And we've set up what uh, I believe is called the pre-call with our drivers and uh, this other guy is going to come and unload me. Now you'll notice he's most of the way full here already. We had a little bit of an incident where the pre-call driver came up behind me and I started dumping into the uh, empty one instead of the half full guy that was turning around on the end row. So we ended up with uh, two guys almost full here, but that's all right. Hopefully we'll be able to finish out this little section before uh, he gets full. But uh, if not, we've got plenty of other things we can go work on. Because this is a cornfield, we're going to need to do some tillage out here to bust up some of these corn stalks at some point. Now, this guy came over on my left-hand side, so I was going to take the straight row there, but I guess we'll just follow around the curve and unload. If we were actually chopping corn, we wouldn't have this much residue on the ground texture-wise, but that's a, that's a farm simism for you. We'll, uh, we'll just have to get over it. But with the uh, corn ground here, we are going to do some tillage on it, and we do have that uh, 2630 ripper that we'll be busting out here in a little bit. And I think starting to work on the tillage on this end of the field while the... Uh, workers continue to do the bulk of the silage over there in the main part of the field at least that's the plan we'll see how it works out here i don't think that driver's full i think he's just figuring out how to get over here we confused him a bit oh i'm wrong he's headed back up to the farm well look at that well i guess while we wait for him to get back we'll shut this thing down and I'm going to jump up here into the farm. We're going to get this 9630 fired up. I can't wait to uh, put this thing to the test. I think it's going to be a perfect tillage tractor. I'm sure we'll find some other things to do with it to keep us uh, busy as well. But today we're going to be busting out that ripper and seeing how it works. I know a few people have warned me that uh, that ripper that we've got on the save is a little bit wonky. So we'll see how it works out here. I meant to test it off camera. I just didn't get the opportunity. So well, part of the fun, I suppose, of farm sim is finding the mods that work the way that you want. 
So we're going to test this one out and see what happens. The 4440 is still unloading. I'm be curious to see if the 7810 can stack up behind him without causing issues. Yep, looks like he's awaiting in line just fine. And this has got a good interior. Looks nice. So we left our tillage up here by the uh, silos. So let's see if we can sneak in here and get everything hooked up. We got some big bushes overgrowing the area here. I can't remember if we've got manual attach on this save or not, so we're about to find out. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Let's get this thing running up here to the field. Hopefully our uh, other forage box is almost empty here and going to be heading back out. I'd love to finish up that section we were working on and then get the uh, workers going on the other section just so we can kind of set it and forget it. This uh, ripper is huge. I always forget just how big this uh, tillage equipment can be. It's so long. I like that the road has a little bit of a bump up there as you go over the asphalt. It feels very realistic. And here we are. So ideally, what uh, I would do is have the... Um, corner here all emptied out what I want to do is start at the end of the field and work my way into the main part of the field but at a bit of an angle I, I can't remember the exact degrees but I think we always would do the tillage at like eight degrees or something off center just to kind of break things up so I'm gonna back up here a little bit kind of get on a, a better line and then, man, I wish I could remember. Maybe it was more like 10 or 12 degrees. So I think what we're going to do is put this at maybe an 8 degree uh, offset. I really can't remember what we used to do. So we're going to try. I think it's going to be like 82 degrees given our current facing. And let's see if we can uh, figure this out. There we go. Yeah, that looks about right. We're going at a decent enough angle here. And let's just double check the map. That is going to hit our a plowing state. So that all looks good. So I think this is going to work out pretty good for us. Let's... Uh, Hit pause on this for just a second, though. I want to get our silage chopping going here again. We've got both of our drivers here ready and waiting while we were getting that all sorted out. And if we can take this chunk of the field out here and get everything going, we'll be able to work on some tillage while the uh, forage harvest continues here behind the scenes. I'm digging that it, we're going to be able to fully automate this job. That's one of the things I like in my uh, my personal play styles for farm sim is being able to see a bunch of different things going on on the farm at the same time. I always get kind of bored and distracted if there's just one job going on. It just kind of feels uh, meh to me, but having a whole crew out working on stuff on the farm should be awesome. And I'm hoping this guy figures out to switch sides here. Well, here we go. Good deal. I suppose ideally we're turning a little bit too uh, sharply here for the drivers to do a great job of keeping up with me. I bet you if I turn wider here, he'll figure it out a little bit better. And come all the way down here, getting this last track. We got caught up on that one corn stalk, it looks like. <laughs> here we go. This is working out quite well. Got, uh, what, another two rounds here, and we'll have this all up wrapped up. 
And just like that, we've wrapped up this corner here of Tillage. So we're going to be able to now go get this automation that we've been uh, jammering on about here for so long set up and moving. Uh, I'm going to just bring this guy down to the other end of the field with me, I think. We're not going to be needing GPS for this. I think we're going to use the uh, base game helper. I think that's going to work out just fine for us. So we're going to attempt to make sure we're turning nice and wide down here on the headlands to give this guy some room to adjust and get uh, turned in behind me. I always hate turning with the worker on my inside, but maybe I'll be able to pull it off. We'll see, we'll see. We're gonna go extra wide out into the grass here. There we go. And just like that, it looks like, oh, we're set. Just trying to get into my row here. There we are. Turn on the helper and I think we're good to go. I'm just making sure we're on a straight line here. It looks like we're good. Looks good, looks good. All right, well, at this point, we're all uh, good to go. The workers are gonna take care of all of this for us. We're not gonna have to do a thing. I have complete confidence in their ability to get things working. And we're gonna jump over here into the tillage equipment here. Got my GPS lines all on, and we're gonna see if I can figure out how to actually pull this off. We're gonna be doing skip rows, and I'm gonna try and do this tillage on my own for a change. We don't do a lot of it here. Let's see, drop me down into maybe 11th. That looks like a good gear here. This hill is actually pulling pretty hard. And I guess we could come in cab here, lift it up, bring it around, right back into the row. Straighten out our tillage and, oh, drop it down a little faster there. There we go. So, yeah, not too bad. We're going at about an 8 degree angle here across the rows. I think, I can't remember for sure. I'm sure a lot of you in the comments, there's a lot of different opinions on uh, tillage and stuff. We didn't do a lot of traditional tillage when I was uh, farming as a teenager. However, from what I remember, we tried to go somewhere in the 5 to 10 degree uh, range. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a happy medium here. We're hitting 8 degrees across the rows. It looks pretty steep, actually, but um, yeah, it looks like it's working out for us. And given the shape of this field, it's the perfect angle uh, for us to kind of take things and maximize where we're driving over here. Um, this is lined up almost perfectly with the curves uh, right back there and the one that juts out up here so we're going to be able to take the entire length of the field here and then I'll, what I'll probably do is work back in here and hit some of these smaller sections while uh, the worker is over here doing its thing on the long rows and then we can come back and hit the big part of this field afterwards because I think I would catch up with the chopper if I was trying to do the skip rows and work my way into the middle of that field. I think we'd uh, we'd get in the way pretty quickly here. But that's all right. We've got a lot of field over here uh, that we can tackle. So we're going to be giving that a shot. And we're coming up to the end row here. So I'm going to see if we can uh, pull off our same... Uh, snazzy turnaround here that we did on the previous run. I'm going to jump right back into this row and as soon as I start turning I think I'm going to drop this thing because it takes a while to lower. We've got to get used to our distances here a little bit and we're going to try not to go through the ditch I think but I am going to come up here and continue on that same skip row. Uh, maybe I can just do this one actually. Let's just hit this one while we're here. At the end of the day, I don't think it matters a ton. Um, there's something about uh, not having the tillage equipment pull so hard when you're uh, doing skip rows and then you come back in between, um, how it bounces around in between the two rows. I can't recall. 
but we're just going to uh, do what makes sense here given that we are operating on some crazy short rows here. Looks like the uh, top of the hill there, we're not quite hitting based on the uh, elevation and the angle. We might have to come back and hit that spot at a little bit different way, but that's all right. Wouldn't be uh, farm sim without some weird farm sim mechanics to deal with. And I have to say, I do like uh, the uh, cornstalk textures on this map. They feel pretty realistic if you were actually harvesting corn with a combine. So we'll be doing our fair share of that at some point here, I'm sure. Uh, but we've got to be super focused on making sure that we can feed our cows, especially in the first year here. We're making quite a bit of silage uh, off of this field. I think we're going to have more than enough silage to uh, increase the number of cows that we've got on the farm here soon. I'm not too worried about that. We were, I think, initially a little bit concerned when we were first getting started here, but as we've moved through this field chopping all this corn, uh, we're starting to get these harvest stores filled up pretty good. Now I've just got a bit of a headland pass to do over there, so I think what we're gonna do is lift up and go take this short section uh, that we kind of skipped past a minute ago. I can see the chopper down there on the end row waiting for a forage box to catch up, and the the forage box driver is uh, getting turned around down there. And we're right back into the row here. Um, this is quite the goofy little area to get into with some of this bigger equipment, but that's all right. We'll figure it out here. I don't know if there's really a much better way to do this than what we're doing right now. So we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. And it's always exciting to see the chopper over there with the, the forge box driver, just getting it done. I've been quite impressed with auto drive in this entire experience. I've kind of avoided doing a lot of chopping in the past just because I was not excited by uh, all the wonkiness with dealing with uh, multiple drivers and all that stuff, but if I'd known it worked this smoothly, I probably would have done it a lot more earlier. So we'll probably be upgrading our forage harvester here at some point uh, just because if I'm gonna add a whole bunch of cows to this uh, this farm we're gonna need lots and lots of silage and I don't mind doing silage but it is time consuming and so if we got a bigger chopper on the uh, farm here we could do a lot more a lot quicker so we'll be looking into that as an investment opportunity and at that point we'd probably upgrade to semis uh, for hauling the chaff back up to the farm because that's going to give us a, a lot more volume per trip which will match up well with getting a bigger chopper. Um, it's been surprising to me actually just to see how much volume of material we're pulling off of the field with those machines. And it feels like I'm getting this ripper dialed in here pretty well. We're making it right back into our turns and oh my goodness we gotta watch where we're going or we're gonna end up in an irrigation ditch let's uh let's get spun around here i'm gonna go and uh, start working oh it's such a heavy machine uh start working out back in on our other rows here something like this we'll take these skip rows back up into the main area and then it'll just be the headland passes left which will wrap up at the end and this uh, 96 I think it's a 9630 T that we're driving here has been a uh, fun machine here so far I'm actually really enjoying the in cab views I suppose we could even drop off the HUD the only problem with dropping off the HUD is it does get rid of my GPS lines which I kind of like not that I need them for this um, obviously, I can see where I need to turn in. It's the part that we haven't done tillage yet. Uh, so especially when I'm coming back and getting the rows that we skipped, it's a piece of cake. But we're getting the uh, ripper dropped right back down into the row here each time. It seems to be going pretty good. The only thing I'm noticing is that my mirrors seem to be uh, 
blinking out occasionally. I'm not sure what's going on with that, if that's the mod or if I have some issues with my graphics settings. Wouldn't put it past me to have some graphics setting issues. There's been a lot of weirdness with Farm Sim lately with things flickering on and off, uh, different texture problems, and so um, I don't know what's going on with that, but it's mildly annoying. I don't do a lot of in-cab driving, typically, but, you know, I do like to mix it up occasionally, and it's been a lot of fun here doing some in-cab with this tillage. It's just a little things like these uh, flickering mirrors that drives me crazy enough that it makes me want to go back out of cab when I'm uh, doing that. And I'm just going to pick up a few of these little pieces like this where we've apparently left a bit of a corner that's going to make it hard. We've got probably two headland passes to do on most of this field to knock things out in the right way. So anywhere that I see more than that, I want to just make sure we're knocking out here. And I think my plan is to just come up here and we'll start uh, hitting more skip rows. So I could probably come right back in next to the row that we've already done here, just for the fun of it, I suppose. And then we'll start skipping in as we move towards the uh, bulk of the field there. The chopper's still going over there. Looks like everything's working out for us. I'm going to be real curious to see if there's a lot of downtime with the hired helper and auto drive workers here. Will the other driver make it back in time to unload? It looks like, you know, with these guys going, they're going to start getting full soon. Um, the drivers didn't have any trouble keeping up with me when I was driving, but we were doing this shorter rows over here where there was a lot of turning around and a lot of uh, goofing off that happened. And over here on these nice straight square rows, I expect that the uh, drivers are going to have a little bit harder time keeping up because it takes them so long to unload up at the harvest store. That's one of the other reasons I'm looking forward to maybe switching things up, getting some big semis running, is that I think they'd probably end up running a little bit uh, quicker, unloading a little bit quicker, and so we'd be able to keep up with the chopper a uh, bit more. And as I suspected, we are going to catch up very quickly here with the uh, chopping dynamic. I've got at least one more round, if not a couple rounds here before we catch up. And then I can always maybe just go back and hit the headlands on the curvy bits here. That's going to take me a minute uh, to get done anyway. So maybe we'll just do that when we get up to the other end here is start taking a headland pass off and we'll We'll always go back up this way, and then I'll take the curvy bit all the way back down and around a couple times here to knock out the headlands. Uh, it does look like the other driver, though, has gotten back out here to the field, so everything seems to be working efficiently. My pre-call is working, so he's going to come out here and try and get in line behind the 4440 so that he's all ready to start uh, dumping, or I guess unloading the forage harvester and looks like yep the 4440 just wrapped up and is on his way and the 7810 is looking for a good place to turn around down here good deal probably went a little bit further back there than he needed to to turn around but i guess with these wonky trailers sometimes it pays off to have a little extra room to get straightened out and align back up on the harvester so no complaints, they're figuring it out, and quite honestly, the downtime on the harvester is pretty minimal at this point uh, with how the auto drive workers are keeping up with it. So I can't, I can't really complain. And like I said, I think I'm just going to take this headland pass off here around. I don't know if I'd want to turn quite this sharp with this big ripper in the ground, but that's all right. We're going to wing it here. And I think I am going to take the outside pass here. I'm going to turn off my GPS helpers. Yeah, this is not uh, doing the best job on some of these hilly spots of registering as a tillage tool. So I don't know. We're going to have to come back and try and hit a few of those maybe from a different direction or something. It's going to irk me if we have all of these spots around the field that didn't get tilled. 
So far, that's been my only real complaint with this mod, is that it doesn't hit some of those spots when there's a little bit of uh, incline on the soil. But other than that, everything seems to be working out pretty well. I feel like the roller on the back is probably rotating a little bit faster than I'm actually driving. The same with the discs in the front. So that would be one thing that it feels like those things are just going really fast. Yeah, it's definitely going to take us a minute to do these headland passes around all of the curvy bits uh, around the stream here, which is good. It's going to give that uh, forge harvester a little bit more time to get ahead of us. It hasn't even uh, completed this next round yet, and it's taken things six rows at a time. I feel like I'm probably doing more than that. So oh, that's all right. I think we're probably going a little bit faster than it too, which I don't know if that's overly realistic, but if I remember right, the Forge Harvester was going, you know, six, seven miles an hour. And so the fact that we've got a wider implement and we're able to match its speed is not a great recipe for doing two jobs at the same time. Usually the second job needs to go slower or it could cause uh, some problems if we catch up. So we're going to find some things to keep ourselves distracted with here. Trying to take these turns as gradually as I can with a big tool like this. I feel like when I turned really sharp, it didn't work quite as well. We are missing a few bits back there, so I'm going to attempt to lift up and go back there and clean that up a little bit. I'm just going to bring it out here to the edge of the row we've got here. Something like that. And as long as I'm down here in this little spot, we're just going to clean up this whole mess in the corner, I feel like. As much of it as I can anyway without going into the ditch. Now there's a few little spots here that this thing just doesn't want to till up. I'm beginning to wonder if it's a problem with the tillage or the field itself. I don't know. I guess I could try and turn on uh, the create fields next time I go through that spot. Let me do that, in fact, because that would tell me what kind of a problem it is. If it's a problem with the field or the tool, if it does it when I have create fields on, then it's a problem with the field, I think. I don't want to do it right there because I'm on the grass. I'm going to come over here. And let's see now. I'm going to turn on create fields. We went a bit far into the ditch there, but it looks like create fields was working. So I'm going to get going back in the direction I was before, though, and just make sure we're testing this theory appropriately. Got to spin all the way around here. Just noticed our tracks do actually bounce up and down independent to the main frame, which is pretty cool. All right, here we are, and I'm turning on Create Fields. Oh, no, it does actually skip that part, too. That's all right. I'm turning off Create Fields to make sure we're not making a mess here. And we'll just grab this section here real quick. Very nice. And we said when we were down on this end, we were going to do our skip row back up. So that's what we're going to do. Get turned in here, looking for our GPS lines. And oh, there we go. We are back off to the other end of the field. We've got a few little bits here and there that we struggled to get. I've got to do one more headland pass to wrap up the uh, scraggly bits over here in that uh, spot. But then we'll be pretty much waiting on this field to finish getting harvested before we can knock out the rest of the tillage. I mean, obviously we do have a, a few more rounds that we can do over there, so we'll keep working on that. And yeah, I think this is probably a great place to wrap up today's episode. We've gotten a ton of work done on the farm here today. We've gotten the forage harvest going automatically, which is great. Um, I feel like we had a lot of fun with that, but I'm more than happy to uh, wash my hands of it and let the workers take care of it. And we've gotten a head start on our fall tillage here. 
we're able to jump in here and knock some of this out at the same time that we're harvesting. Realistically, eh, we might wait a little bit for some of this stuff to dry out. It's a little early in the year, the, but uh, also realistically, we wouldn't have this much residue on the field if we were harvesting after the uh, forge harvester went through. So it's kind of a mix of uh, pick, pick your uh, poison here. And so we're gonna just uh, run with this. And yeah, we'll check in with you next episode and see what we're doing. We'll probably check in on the cows next episode and uh, how much chaff and all that stuff we've got. We'll check into all the stats next episode. That's all for today. Keterk out. And of course, we have our first time getting stuck after I say nobody's gotten stuck yet. Figures.